All right, guys, welcome to today's video. We've got so much to talk about today from a highly anticipated game being canceled to industry legends developing new IP. We've got talk of a PlayStation showcase and more rumors of Xbox games coming to PS5. If you're new here to the channel, please consider subscribing if you like this type of content, talking about PlayStation gaming and industry news, rumors, and leaks. There was a time way back when I used to really look forward to Ubisoft games from games like Brothers in Arms, which was published by Ubisoft, Far Cry, Ghost Recon, The Division, Splinter Cell, Watch Dogs, and the Assassin's Creed games. But over the last few years, I've really gone off them and I can't quite put my finger on why this is the case. I don't know if it's the endless fetch quests, constant requirement for monetization, or if it's something else. I'm just not really quite sure why I've gone off them. But Ubisoft games, have, for me, they've just lost their appeal. Now, Ubisoft has just released a new trailer of its game. It's a new game called Assassin's Creed Shadows, which is just a CGI trailer. And like all trailer, this trailer looks absolutely brilliant. It really has caught my attention. It's set in Japan, which is something I'm really enjoying right now. And the location that I'm really interested in following the release of Ghost of Tsushima and Rise of the Ronin. But somehow Ubisoft always finds a way to rub people up the wrong way. The new Ubisoft Assassin's Creed Shadow game will once again require players to connect to the internet and that is to install the single player game that people buy on a physical disc right so you buy the physical disc but you still have to have an internet connection to download the game it's crazy Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and Star Wars Outlaws are both games that require an internet connection to download the physical game and now we've got Assassin's Creed Shadows which will also require an online connection to download the physical game in other words the physical game is just a code to unlock the digital game. If you don't have an internet connection, your physical game is worthless and you will not be able to play it. This was confirmed by the PlayStation Store, which has the tagline of online play required. And retail stores have the same thing written on the game's box art. Basically, this means if you buy a copy of the game on disc, pop that disc into your PS5, you won't be able to play what you paid for without an internet connection. I know the chances in this day and age of people not having access to the internet is slim, but still, that's not the point. You buy a physical game from the shop, you should be able to play the game offline without the requirement of an online connection or the internet connection. The problem is that this means that years from now, when Ubisoft moves on from this Assassin's Creed Shadows game and when we're on future generations of consoles, a physical copy of Assassin's Creed Shadows could be potentially useless because there's no guarantee that Ubisoft will continue to support the servers that run the DRM checks to ensure that you properly purchase the game that you're about to play. It completely goes against the preservation of physical media and it's a really shitty move. It, does, it doesn't mean that you need to be connected online all the time to play the game. Ubisoft have confirmed that's not the case. What they have said is that you need the internet connection to download the game when you first pop the CD or the, the disc into your console. It's still a shitty move. This issue aside, this is the first time an Assassin's Creed game is heading to Japan. The new game is uh, Ubisoft Quebec. They're the guys who are develop developing this game. And they're the team behind the very well received Assassin's Creed Odyssey game, which some would argue is probably one of the best Assassin's Creed games out there. The size of the game map will be as close to the Assassin's Creed Origins map. And that's according to the creative director, Jonathan Dumont. Ubisoft's Carl Uni, or Oni, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, has revealed Assassin's Creed Shadows will feature seasons that will have a direct impact on the game world. Spring, summer, autumn and winter seasons will be featured in the game. Only offered examples of how they will affect the game world. For example, a pond may be there in the summer, but in the winter time, that pond is now frozen over, meaning you cannot dive into it which will offer a different way and different routes of infiltration depending on the season. And that actually sounds really good, being able to take into account the time of year, the season, the weather and stuff like that in the environment sounds really good. But there needs to be some gameplay really before we, I suppose, get too excited, right? We need to see what it actually looks like. The game is coming out this year, November the 15th. So we are due for a gameplay reveal probably at the Summit Games Fest next month. Okay, guys, let's move on. Rockstar Games co-founder Dan Hauser left the studio. He helped create and become a global legend of the gaming industry. He actually left that studio, Rockstar, in 2020. He then, a year later, went out and founded and set up his own studio called Absurd Ventures. Fast forward to 2024, and Hauser's new studio has already revealed its first two initial projects, but neither of them were actual video games or different projects outside of the gaming industry. However, thanks to a job listing, we do know that Hauser's team are busy working on a brand new IP. A job listing for Absurd 
Absurd Ventures reveals that the studio is working on an open world action adventure game. <laughs> surprise, surprise, stick to what you know, right? In this day and age, open world action adventure games are as common as anything. Just like FPS games, live service games, and so on, we don't know anything about this upcoming game just yet, besides that the genre description given in the job listing. But it's a nice confirmation for players keen to see what Hauser would do next, and that there is a game for him or from him and his team in the works. I wonder how much of the, the GTA Rockstar DNA style of games will be present in Hauser's next game. But time will tell, surely. But I am keen to learn more about what Hauser's team is up to and what Absurd Ventures can produce over the coming years. So let's move on. And um, yeah, disappointing news, really. Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland was a highly anticipated game. Many people were looking forward to this coming out, but we haven't really heard anything from Ubisoft about this game for a very long time. And now we know why. Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland has been cancelled officially by Ubisoft. The cancellation comes as Ubisoft will look to focus on what it considers to be bigger opportunities, meaning X Defiant and Rainbow Six Siege. Heartland was first announced all the way back in 2021 to be made by Red Storm Entertainment and intended to be its own standalone gaming experience. Fast forward three years later, development on the game has been completely halted for no reason other than Ubisoft doesn't think it's actually worth it. It doesn't feel it has the legs to be worth getting across the finish line. So while X Defiant is still very much an unknown quantity in how well that game will actually do, it is launching on the 21st of May next week and it's clear that Ubisoft's focus is right on that game. Ubisoft go on to say, after careful consideration, we have made a tough call to halt development on Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland effective immediately. Our priority is to support the talented team members of our Red Storm Entertainment Studio who will be transitioning to new projects within our game, including X Defiant and Rainbow Six. Although the Division Heartlands has been cancelled, the Division 3 is still currently in development. This was actually confirmed last year in September 2023. However, it will be some time before we see that game, hopefully 2026, but realistically closer to 2027, which is more of a likely year of release. Okay, guys, just before we move on, just a reminder to hit that like and subscribe button. If you're liking the content so far, do us a favor, smash that like button. A new report suggests that Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella wants to bring more Xbox games to PlayStation as soon as possible. With the instant success Sea of Thieves found on Sony's platform considered a key test. It seems like the writing is on the wall at this point. Microsoft leadership reportedly wants there to be no red line, nothing at all stopping the company's most valuable IP like Halo and Gears of War coming to competing platforms. And that's according to Windows Central with Jess Corden reporting that an operation known internally as Latitude is currently underway. The operation plans to bring more Xbox IP to PlayStation and Nintendo, which is part of Satya Nadella and CFO Amy Hood's mandate to increase the margins in every department. An important point that, right? To increase the margins in every department. Clearly, they're not making those margins right now. They need to get their games onto other platforms to deliver margin. That's all the shareholders are interested in, in any corporation, not just Microsoft. Every corporation is interested in the bottom line. Okay, the plan pushed by Microsoft leadership intends for no red line internally or nothing to be off the table when pursuing the initiative. This directive has reportedly sparked debate and unease within the company and more Microsoft owned games are already under consideration to come over to the PlayStation platform. I've got to be honest, I've covered this before on several videos. It's pretty obvious Microsoft games are coming to PlayStation and Nintendo. And if you can't see that, I think you just need to step back and just analyze it. Both Nintendo and PlayStation gamers have to buy their games if they want to play those games on those platforms. I'm talking about the single player, AAA games, those that are exclusive to that platform. I'm not talking about the, the live service games that PlayStation's pushing to come out day and day on PC. That's a different kettle of fish your AAA games, even your AA games that come out on PlayStation, to play it first, you've got to buy it on the PlayStation. It's not coming to PlayStation Plus, right? So on that basis, if Microsoft released games onto PlayStation and Nintendo, if the gamers like those types of games, they will have to pay for them. Unlike what's happening currently, most of the time on the Xbox console where most gamers are waiting for games to drop into Game Pass and with the ability to play those games on PC, there's even less of a reason not only to buy an Xbox but also to pay for those games when they release on the platform. Hence the reason why Microsoft wants to place its games onto other platforms where there is hundreds of millions of gamers 
with the vast majority of these gamers will pay for those games. As I said before, the four games Microsoft released onto PlayStation's platform was a test case. And for Microsoft, the test the water and see what sells. They did it, they tested the water and the reception was fantastic. The gamers went out and purchased those games. And what Microsoft has learned is that if you can't take a horse to water, bring the fucking bucket to the horse. In other words, if we can't make the gamers come to Xbox, then we're going to have to take our games to PlayStation and Nintendo. I've covered all this before on previous videos. Go ahead, take a look at those videos if you want more about this topic. It all sounds like common sense from Microsoft. They need a return on their investment from the gaming division. They've taken a look at the numbers and the return on investment is not coming from Game Pass or any game sales. It's not happening, right? They're not going to get that investment back on their acquisitions. And the only way they're going to even try to get anywhere near or close to a return on investment is by releasing those games onto rival platforms. It's pretty obvious. It's common sense, man. You just got to have a look at the numbers. Okay, guys, let's move on. We finally have a release date for the amazing looking Crimson Desert. Pearl Abyss is getting its house in order to release a number of games over the next 12 to 18 months or so. So twi Twitter or X user Lunatic Ignis, who has reliably leaked details about the Asian game releases in the past, has details that indicate that the three games by Pearl Abyss, now that's Crimson Desert, is either Dokev or Doke V and Plan 8. They will all be coming out one after the other. And according to the leak, development on Crimson Desert is apparently almost complete and the studio will be focusing on a release in Q1 2025, which is a lot sooner than I really expected, but great news nonetheless. Leading up to this, marketing on the game is going to kick off over the next coming months, starting off with a brand new demo planned for Gamescom this year during the Summer Games Fest. Development on the other game, Dok V or Dokov and Plan 8 are also seemingly continuing and both are planned for release after Crimson Desert between Q2 in 2025 and Q1 2026. So the next 12 to 18 months, we are going to see very high chance of all three games coming out from Pearl Abyss. Very interested to see what they look like, especially Crimson Des Desert. That looked phenomenal. It looked absolutely fantastic when I saw the original gameplay trailer. I'm not sure about um, the other game, Doak V and, and Planet 8, but I remember seeing Crimson Desert and being completely blown away. It looked fantastic. It looked epic, a kind of game where you can easily spend, and this worries me, but you can easily spend hundreds of hours playing that game. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just remember looking at that trailer, and I was blown away. So you can see that trailer being played in the background. I've got to have this. I can't wait for this to come out. So very excited to learn more about this. Can't wait for that demo to come out, that gameplay demo, I hope proper gameplay demo during the Games Fest uh, next month. So let's move on. A recent Sony blog post seemingly teases a PlayStation showcase scheduled to be held later this month. Rumors of a 2024 PlayStation showcase have been steadily mounting now for a while, but this may be the first official allusion towards the actual event. Ever since PlayStation pulled away from physical events like E3, the company has relied on large scale online streams to announce brand new first party games and big third party titles. Sony has held showcases on a near annual basis since the PS5 launched and expectations for the next one are high after the 2023 PlayStation Showcase was disappointing for pretty much all PlayStation fans, largely in part to a massive focus during that event on live service titles and smaller indie AA style games. It was a real disappointment because they didn't focus on single player AAA games. No Sony first party game was shown that I that I can remember, certainly not a single, single player game, AAA level, um, which is what Sony is renowned for, PlayStation anyway. But if you remember back, we had rumors of a second PlayStation showcase in 2023 and a lot of people, a lot of people actually thought the first one, the first event in May was just to get out the live service stuff, get it out of the way. And then the second one, August, September, will be the big one. But it never happened. It never materialized. The rumor mill for the 2024 PlayStation Showcase started earlier this year with insider Jeff Grubb claiming that the company had an event planned for May, which was when the 2023 Showcase was also held. So far, Sony has remained quiet on the prospect, haven't said anything at all, but a recent post on the Sony Interactive Entertainment blog may have spilled the beans. So the blog post, which announces PlayStation's new CEOs and details their individual responsibilities, contains an intriguing excerpt near the end, which says, 
Later this month, you will learn more about the long-term vision for Sony Group and the essential role SIE plays in that vision. While the quote does sound like a clear reference to a showcase, which is where PlayStation reveals its future first-party games, some have also pointed out that it could also be alluding to a public Sony Group meeting that is slated to happen late in May. However, it's important to note that last year's Sony Group meeting also took place at a similar time frame as the 2023 showcase, so it's very possible that both both could actually coexist. The 2024 showcase has yet to be officially announced, but if it is indeed scheduled for later this month, then Sony will need to be talking about it sometime over the next few days. As for what games are rumored to be featured in the 2024 PlayStation Showcase, it could be jam-packed with huge reveals. I mean, you've got to think about this now. The PlayStation 5 has been out for four years, and we, we as far as anyone's concerned, that's it. Game-wise, we're done. No one knows officially. No one knows what's coming out over the next two to three years. We know there's games coming out this year. Many of them have been kind of touted about that are coming out on the PlayStation for this year. But beyond that, nobody knows what's happening, especially from the first party studios. We need information. We need trailers. We need gameplay. We need confirmation what the first party studios are working on. Most of the company's first party studios have had development teams on almost multiple projects for three years, right? 2021 onwards, they've been working on separate projects. Ghost of Tsushima 2 is one of the leading choices. A Sucker Punch released the first game four years ago. So Ghost of Tsushima 2 should be well underway. Corey Barlog's unannounced project at Sony Santa Monica could also be formally revealed at the showcase. I mean, I'm not asking for gameplay in all of these. Oh, you know, whatever Santa Monica are working on, let's have a look at it. Let's give us a, a logo, give us a CGI, show us something. Firewalk Studios, Concord will almost certainly receive a gameplay trailer and release date. We need to see that because it's supposed to be coming out 2024. We also have Death Stranding 2 in the pipe work, which needs a gameplay reveal trailer and a release date confirmation. We've got third party partnerships for Metal Gear Solid releasing this year, Silent Hill Remake releasing this year. We also have a new Resident Evil 9 game rumored to be coming out very early 2025. We need gameplay and trailers of this too. There's also projects from Bluepoint Games, Housemark, Naughty Dog that are all in the works that we could get some information on. What we need is a roadmap of what each of the studios is working on. We may not be able to see gameplay and trailers from all the studios, and that's okay, that's understandable. Some of these studios may not be ready, but we need to hear from every studio. But what I would like to think that those studios that have had at least three to four years development time on games could come to the showcase with a trailer or gameplay. And for me, that gameplay would be for Ghost of Tsushima, number two. That that I think is a certainty. One thing is for certain though for PlayStation, their next PlayStation showcase needs to be big. It needs to be massive. So it needs to treat this like they did with the, um, I think it was the 2016 E3 showcase, which is probably one of the greatest E3s that I've ever seen. In that one showcase, we got Days Gone, The Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn, Detroit Become, Become Human, Resident Evil 7 VR, Star Wars Battlefront VR, Batman Arkham VR, Final Fantasy VR, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Kojima announced Death Stranding, we got Spider-Man, and we got God of War. I mean, if this wasn't the greatest ever E3 for PlayStation, I don't know what was. I just know the time is right. We're all ready. We are waiting. The new CEOs and Sony PlayStation structure is ready. We just need Sony to not only announce a new showcase, but most importantly, Sony needs to deliver a f***ing <laughs> showcase. That's all I've got. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about today's topic. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.